We'll, we'll get to that story in just a moment. But Orange County uh, Mayor Jerry Demings is giving an update now on the coronavirus. Let's listen in. As local leaders without your assistance. So thank you for being here. Let me also acknowledge some of our other electeds who were not uh, introduced. Uh, we have Orange County Commissioner Myra Uribe who is here and also Orange County Commissioner Christine Moore who have joined us. Uh, we have the Comptroller, Mr. Phil Diamond, who is here as well. Uh, as we move forward, I also want to acknowledge that um, I appreciate uh, federal officials who have reached out to me within the last 24 hours, uh, received correspondence and communications from uh, uh, U.S. Senator Marco Rubio, as well as uh, U.S. Representative uh, Val Demings. Uh, they provided uh, good information regarding the uh, COVID-19 economic relief package uh, that will be coming forward. We certainly look forward to receiving that information because it is significant to our community how those uh, funds will be uh, distributed throughout the country, but right here in our community. Let me also uh, say to you that um, I know that uh, this has been much like a roller coaster ride uh, for many of the people in our community, uh, and it's not over yet. And within the last uh, 24 hours or so, we have had numerous new developments. And our goal today is to keep our public as informed as we possibly can. Uh, tonight, the mandatory stay-at-home order will take effect at 11 p.m. It will in include uh, information and direction uh, for the order through April the 9th at 11 p.m. During this time, the curfew will also remain in effect, uh, which is a nightly curfew from 11 p.m. until 5 a.m. Uh, all of these efforts are meant to keep our residents uh, at home and stop the spread of the highly contagious uh, virus that we're dealing with. This is a strategy not meant to cause undue hardship on our community, but to pull together now so we can get rid of the virus as quickly as possible. And uh, here's why. 110 cases of the coronavirus have now been reported in Orange County. And that number almost changes now hourly. So I look forward to hearing the most recent update from Dr. Pino with the Florida Department of Health in just a few moments. But with the 110 that I'm talking about now, since we last came to you during a news conference, that number has more than doubled during that period of time. Uh, this is concerning to me, and it should be concerning to you. In addition, the Florida Department of Health now reports that there are four deaths in Orange County. Again, that number even doubled since we last came to you just two days ago. Dr. Pino is here and will uh, go into more details about uh, that information. Our first responders, uh, again, are being impacted by the virus. And here within Orange County, one of our very own Orange County firefighters has also uh, reportedly tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, this firefighter is self-quarantined at this time. As we move forward, in addition to uh, that firefighter, 15 of our Orange County firefighter employees are on self-quarantine as a precaution to possible exposures uh, on multiple calls that they've responded to. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the executive order at this time, which is, is, has now been amended before it goes into effect at 11 p.m. tonight. There have been numerous inquiries regarding questions and uh, clarifications on the executive order. We have listened to you, the public, uh, and we have made modifications to the executive order that clarify essential versus non-essential business activities. The bottom line is the intent is to not punish people or businesses. Uh, these efforts are to help slow the spread of COVID-19, and we need all of your help to do so. Even if your business is deemed an essential business, uh, we ask that you please still have your employees work from home if they are able to do so. It is important to remember just because you can still legally operate and have your employees on site does not mean you should. 
We all need to be mindful and operate remotely when we can, like what we are doing from a local government perspective. I want to thank you for doing your part uh, as the greater Orange County and Metro Orlando area to combat the spread of this illness. Limiting unnecessary employee interactions is critical. In addition, we have amended the emergency executive order to clarify some things. Uh, for example, all businesses can continue to conduct minimum basic operations such as payroll. I know your employees want to, or your employees want to get uh, paid, so we are not trying to stop those types of processes. We ask that you please visit our website again at ocfl.net backslash coronavirus for an updated frequently asked questions link that addresses and updates um, the amended executive order or provides information to our community. Let me remind everyone that Orange County government is still working on your behalf to both manage the crisis and also maintain our continuity of operations. Forty percent of our workforce is now telecommuting from home. We still continue to serve you. We will be updating you shortly on the overwhelming number of phone calls that we are receiving to our crisis hotline. I know that's important to many of our citizens. Uh, the department director, Mr. Lonnie Bell, is here uh, from our community and family services department, and he will provide an update on hotline operations. Uh, we know that there's a desperate need in our community for help during this time, and we are working to respond in the best way possible. I would now like to ask uh, Mayor Buddy Dye of the City of Orlando to come forward and uh, share any information with you as well. Mayor Buddy Dye. Thank you, Mayor Demings. And I want to thank Mayor Demings and the mayors of all of our Orange County cities and national leadership in Osceola County for all of your, uni un your leadership. And I'm trying to remember not to touch the podium here. Um, I want to thank everybody for the leadership of the communities together to unite behind the stay at home. Uh, doing this together means that we can reduce the spread in Orlando and Orange County and in Central Florida in general. The stay at home order is going to be more effective in slowing the spread if we act together. And I want to point out we had been working with in Tampa and St. Petersburg over the weekend and through this week and Pinellas adopted an order yesterday and my understanding is that Hillsborough is in order today so we have ends of the I-4 quarter with stay-at-home orders now. As a government we're doing everything we can to make responsible decisions and decisions that are based on data and decisions from the recommendations of health care experts to stop the spread and the all of our Public health care experts advised us that to stop the we have to simply stay home. That means that we need to close down non-essential businesses to encourage telecommuting and we need to maintain six foot dif distances between us. And I know these are hard decisions. They're hard for all of us, but the stay at home order, as Mayor Deming said, was not something that we wanted to do. It's something that we had to do. We have to stop the spread of this virus. We have to flatten the curve. Because if we don't, we're going to get other people sick. We're going to overwhelm our hospitals and our health care system. The nurses and the doctors will get sick. And if we don't, we won't have enough protective equipment for our first responders and for our professionals. That's why it's so important and that's why it's so critical. So I'm calling on all of our residents today to spread the message, not the virus. Change of action has consequences that affects our entire community. So we're here in Orlando and we're strong and we continue to remain unified in our identity and our sense of community, one family looking out for each other, and being united is always our greatest strength. So I've seen residents and businesses showing compassion, teachers and staff that are distributing meals to ensure that our 
students have healthy breakfasts and and car birthday parades to connect with their students, small businesses who have donated goods and services to health care providers. There are people, uh, in fact, my girlfriend is doing this, using sewing machines to make face masks for health care workers. Um, there's children that have brought joy to neighbors with sidewalk works of art, and I could go on with many more examples, but I am really part of the community. We're in this together, and we'll get together. Now I always enjoy calling Dr. Pino. Good afternoon. Many of you have expressed interest in uh, our pilot site uh, testing that we did recently. Um, there's children that have brought joy to neighbors with sidewalk chalk works of art and I could go on with many more examples but I am really proud of our community. We're in this together and we'll get through this together. Now I always enjoy calling on Dr. Pino. Good afternoon. Um, many of you have expressed interest in uh, our pilot site uh, testing that we did recently. It was completed yesterday, the Sentinel study. We tested uh, 50 um, assisting living facilities residents in five facilities around the state, uh, the, the county and we selected geographically uh, those to have a wider coverage of uh, the county area. I also would like to inform that a, a testing site continues to operate. It's a 50% it's a of what I would like to be, what our capacity is right now. Uh, we have detected some issues in the background operations on how to approve and certify the testing. So I will be streamlining that to accelerate the process. Uh, we did 26 tests uh, yesterday. That's very low. We need to increase that. And we are going to do about the same number today. Uh, next week, we should see an increase in those numbers. I also would like to thank um, uh, our providers, our nurses, and our staff. Uh, they are willing to stay operating during the weekend. So we are going to continue to do testing Saturday and Sunday so that we can continue to increase our total mm -hmm. numbers. As we increase our numbers of testing, we have seen an increase of the number of cases that was expected. Um, in saying it doesn't mean that it's irrelevant. It's very relevant that we have uh, broken the mark of 100. And also it's interesting now the epidemic is changing and most of the transmission that we are seeing in our data comes from local transmission in the United States uh, and uh, the county. And we have seen a decrease of the number of uh, incidents that happen from travelers. And that's normal as we um, implement these measures. Um, and sad to announce that uh, we have our first child uh, with COVID-19. He's a nine year old. And we hope that he recover fast so that he returned to school when school opens. Um, we have acquired uh, sufficient uh, ingredients to make our own test kits, collection kits. So tomorrow we will be opening a little shop within the health department to start making test kits. Uh, we have 200, we have ingredients to make 200 uh, tomorrow and we should have another 200 elements uh, for earlier next week. And we will continue to acquire uh, those uh, products uh, with the help of our county, our county government that has provided funding for some of those testing that we are going to start uh, conducting. Uh, with that, I would like to call Dr. Jenkins, uh, the superintendent of schools. Thank you, Doctor. Good afternoon. Let me give you just a few uh, updates from Orange County Public Schools. First, certainly want to uh, thank the mayor for uh, his great wisdom and leadership during this critical time. We also appreciate that that executive order provided some exemptions for the school system and specifically allowed for our feeding program to continue for our children with great needs. But we want to support, the school board and I want to support the intent of the social distancing in order to slow the virus. And so the vast majority of our employees will be at home, several working from home. Schools and central offices will only be open from 9 a.m. to 2 with limited administrators, skeletal crews, crews if you will. 
No walk-ins are permitted, but certainly appointments because we will have some needs regarding our two only priorities at this point. One is distance learning, as we are expected to continue the education for our young people. The other is for the feeding of our children. All the while, those employees will be practicing the CDC guidelines, social distancing, hand washing, et cetera. I also wanted to mention, uh, we were very pleased, our Orange Technical College uh, employees actually gathered all of our medical supplies so that they could deliver them to hospitals in our area where we know supplies will continue to run short. And so we made that donation today. Let me talk briefly about distance learning and grab and go uh, for those who need that information. So our distance learning is ready to kick off on Monday. Last week, this week actually was an extension of our spring break. Next week, we start our distance learning. I wanna thank all of our teachers through creative means. Middle and high schools are doing digital learning. Elementary schools, we have a hybrid between digital learning and learning packets that have been mailed, nearly 30,000 packets mailed to those homes that do not have the capacity for uh, digital learning and engagement. Any parent who has not heard from their teacher at this point needs to either contact the teacher or the school. There's a good possibility that the contact information may not be up to date. So we encourage parents who have not heard from their teacher at this point to contact the school or email the teacher with their contact information. Again, very pleased with the work of my administrative team, principals, teachers, especially want to thank parents because they are now going to become the teachers for our 212,000 students, and it's quite a task. The message I sent to every one of our students is that we believe in them, this entire community supports them, and we're going to get through this. But in the meantime, we need them to get to work on Monday, their digital learning begins. Lastly, concerning grab and go, we'll have some adjustments next week. When we look at our actual participation, we're gonna have some adjustment in sites. That information will be in flyers to individuals as they go through the lines on Monday because some of the sites will change or be condensed by Wednesday. I wanna say again, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. will be our new hours, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. starting on Wednesday, I'm sorry, starting on uh, tomorrow because of the adjustments we've made uh, with the stay at home order. That information was shared as well. And let me recognize and thank so many of our community supporters that have volunteered, that have provided resources to us. I wanna especially thank John Rivers of Four Rivers for his uh, donations and for his working with us. He's doing some phenomenal things in our community to help our children as well. And Second Harvest uh, Food Bank is working very closely with us because it's not only the children who need those good meals, we have families that are in need as well. And we've got great partners that are helping us make that a reality. I'd like to introduce at this point, Lonnie Bell. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd first like to thank the, the mayor for giving me an opportunity to provide an update on our crisis assistance program that we're initiating, that we've initiated this week. And let me start by saying I'd like to acknowledge that we are aware that the initial rollout for the cross crisis hotline to help citizens in this fast moving environment had some challenges. We recognize these challenges and took aggressive action and we're here to report on those actions. We have increased the number of call-ins since Monday, call-in takers, excuse me, and the wait time for the queue system is less than 15 minutes today, where earlier in the week it was 20 minutes and above. So we believe we've taken the right steps and we're on the right track. We are enhancing our ability to handle the enormous call volume on the crisis assistance hotline by adding an online system process. You can ac access the online form by going to this URL, www.ocfl.net backslash COVID-19 rental assistance. I will repeat that, www.ocfl.net backslash COVID-19 rental assistance. Please note that using the online system will be much more convenient and quicker for those that are interested in information about the crisis assistance program and the best way to communicate with us. 
We will continue to accept calls for those that do not have access to a computer. The hours for the operation for the phone line will be 8.30 to 12, Monday through Friday. But please, if you contact us online, there is no need to also call. In fact, calling and going online will slow the process for everyone involved. We know the need is great and we'll be getting back to everyone using the online uh, system in a very timely manner. Let me repeat, you can go online at the, the URL www.ocfl.net backslash COVID-19 rental assistance. Use that, that URL for the most convenient and quickest way to contact us. And for those who must use a number, the number is 407-836-6500 between the hours of 8.30 and 12 noon, Monday through Friday. Again, I know the hotline got off to a challenging start, but we hope that the measures we've taken will speed up the process. The Community and Family Services team has worked very hard to improve this process. We thank you for your patience, and we look forward to serving you with this program. Next, we're going to bring up Sheriff Mina. Thank you, Lonnie, and good afternoon. I want to quell uh, some of the current concerns that we have heard from our Orange County residents as it relates to the stay at home order. Uh, first, I want to reiterate that all the steps that we are taking here are meant to help save lives by slowing the spread uh, of this public health crisis uh, created by the coronavirus pandemic. So let me be clear again, the Orange County Sheriff's Office does not intend to use the stay at home order uh, as a reason to make more arrests. The purpose of the order is to get our residents to act responsibly for their health, uh, the health of their families and the health of our community and stay in their homes when possible. We want you to stay home so that we can stop the spread of this virus. Uh, so here's the direction that we have given to our deputies and the surrounding law enforcement agencies. Uh, if they encounter someone who is not compliance, we are going to ask that vigil to get in compliance and go home if they don't have a reason uh, to be out and about. And we have told deputies when it's possible uh, to give our residents and our businesses the benefit of the doubt. And you know, trust me when I tell you, we didn't uh, get into law enforcement to arrest someone for a stay at home order uh, related to this uh, pandemic, but we will to keep our community safe. But that's the last thing that we wanna do. Additionally, our deputy sheriffs have been given direction to contact the le our legal advisor and a supervisor before we make a physical arrest in, in any case. So remember, every time one of our deputies has to contact someone who is not in compliance with the order, uh, that's just another chance for the virus to spread between our deputies and the rest of our first responders. So we're again, we're asking, we're pleading everyone to um, adhere to the stay at home order uh, and stay home, please. And so we know these are uncertain and confusing times. And, uh, you know, as always, uh, the men and women in law enforcement, all of our first responders, all of our healthcare uh, providers are here for you. We're gonna stay on the front lines uh, when many of you can't, uh, but please stay home if you don't have to be out and about. And so at this time, I'll introduce Chief Judge Myers. Thank you, Sheriff Mina, and thank you, uh, Mayor Demings, for the chance to be able to address the media concerning uh, the current state of the courts. The courts have, for the last week been on a limited access basis, meaning that there are only certain reasons that folks are permitted to come into the building at the courthouse. Uh, the courts are committed obviously to the health and to the safety of the people that we serve, all court users. That means litigants, the lawyers, our clerks, deputies, and our judges and staff as well. During this crisis, there will be no proceedings or court events other than those that are essential and critical to the state of emergency or the public health emergency that are going to be conducted in person or face-to-face -face hearings inside of the courthouse. All non-emergency hearings will be conducted remotely or will be canceled and notification will be given to the parties of that. All proceedings in our outlying courts remain canceled. Those are the courthouses in Apopka, Ocoee, and Winter Park, where typically traffic citations and misdemeanor arraignments may be hit, uh, were taking place. That is for now through April the 17th. 
We are conducting essential and critical proceedings inside of the courthouse to protect the due process rights of those that we serve. If you are seeking an emergency inju injunction for your protection, you may come to the courthouse to complete the paperwork to accomplish that. If you have been noticed for a hearing concerning an injunction for the safety of somebody, you may come to the courthouse and you will be admitted to conduct that hearing. We are conducting emergency shelter hearings and obviously all due process hearings involving arrests or detentions of adults and juveniles. Additionally, Baker Act and other mental health or emergency temporary guardianship proceedings are continuing. All jury trials are suspended through April the 17th. So if you have received a summons to report for jury duty between now and April 17th, your service is complete and you will not be called again for 12 months. The circuit has a dedicated COVID-19 information and update page on our website. I refer you to ninthcircuit.org for all of the updates from individual judges and the courts. Additionally, you can follow us on Twitter or Facebook for the most current updates that the court issues at Ninth Circuit FL, and I encourage you to do that. Thank you, Mayor. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Chief Judge, as well as to all of the other speakers at this point. Uh, sometimes when we do these events, um, I forget to acknowledge our, our deaf interpreter. He does a fantastic job of uh, making certain that we're able to communicate to all segments of our community. Uh, at this time, I will open it up for questions and I will remind those of you who are members of the media in the audience, uh, we do have a microphone. We've had a little bit uh, through the interpretation sometimes of confusion for our viewing audience, uh, so we want to make certain that uh, we do uh, allow them to hear your questions as well. And so with that, I know that if uh, we're staff that has the microphone, okay. So if you'll come uh, to the center and then we'll, we'll, we'll start the, the questions, uh, uh, please. Uh, we'll go to the front. We have a question right here in the very front. All right, we've been listening live to Orange County officials give us an update on the coronavirus uh, pandemic that is affecting our community. Orange County Mayor Jerry Deming is giving some stark numbers in terms of how many new cases we are seeing. He says 110 cases have now been reported in Orange County, a number that changes hourly. That number is more than doubled since just a few days ago, and we now know that one of those patients is a nine-year-old child in Orange County. 